Thor Odinson. He was no ordinary man. He was a god. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in the Thor Love and Thunder trailer. I want to choose my own path. Live in the moment. For this list, we're looking at the best MCU references, story beats, and hidden details in the latest preview for the God of Thunder's fourth film. And if you aren't caught up to everything in Phase 4, watch out for a storm of spoilers. How do you think Jane reassembled Mjolnir? Crazy glue, tape, or magic? Share your theories in the comments below. Number 10. Fantastic Ragnarok and Infinity War callbacks As Love and Thunder takes Thor into uncharted waters, we know it will stop to include a couple of sharp and smart references to past movies. Near the end of the trailer, Zeus removes the Norse god of Thunder's disguise after the Asgardian presumably got caught sneaking around. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. And flip. This is a great callback to Thor's hilariously ineffective disguise in Ragnarok. What's with the... It's my disguise. But I can see your face. Not when I do this, you can't. Before meeting Zeus, we saw the Asgardian getting into shape by pulling the Guardian's ship. That instantly reminded us of the time he swung around a smaller ship that contained Rocket during Infinity War. Is there any chance we can get a reference to Thor's old habit of smashing cups to bring his journey full circle? It's drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Number 9. The Blue Alien Planet Likely Holds a Dark Secret During the trailer, Thor and Korg spend time mediating and telling stories on a planet full of bald and brightly colored aliens. Kids, get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the Space Viking, Thor Odinson. They looked similar to a comic civilization that lived on the planet Indigar. If it's the same planet, it might hold a terrifying sight. In one Thor storyline, he was shocked when he arrived on Indigar and discovered the planet's gods were missing. He eventually investigated further and found out that all the deities that lived there had been slain. Thor's quest to solve this murder mystery put him on a collision course that led him straight to the villainous Gore. Since the movie is centered around the villain, we'll expect the Asgardian to see fallen gods on what looked like an innocent planet. Someone has been playing an intricate game and has made pawns of us. Once all these pieces are in position, Triple Yahtzee, you think you could find out what's coming? I do. Number 8. Sneaky Loki Shoutouts It's still unclear if this will be the first Thor film that doesn't feature the God of Mischief. Whether he appears or not, there were a couple of subtle references to him. In the trailer, Thor appears to be sporting a pair of Loki's signature horns on his back. This moment occurs right before Valkyrie chomps down on some grapes. Should we help him? And eventually, grape. Coincidentally, Loki hilariously mentioned the same fruit when asked about candy. Kablooey. What's that? Candy. Do you have candy on Asgard? Yeah. Grapes, nuts. I wonder you're so bitter. Valkyrie's snack preference seems to be proof that the god of mischief wasn't exaggerating when talking about grapes. Hopefully, the movie includes bigger references to Loki as the narrative goes on. If you're here, I might even give you a hug. I'm here. Number 7. More insight into the Thor and Jane breakup Thor Ragnarok revealed that the romance between the Asgardian and the astronomer has ended off-screen. Sorry to hear that Jane dumped you. She didn't dump me, you know. I dumped her. It was a mutual dumping. However, we had no idea exactly when their sweet relationship dissolved. But Thor gave us a pretty precise idea during the trailer. What's it been like? Three? Four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months, and six days. Give or take. By doing the math on his statement and counting backwards, it seems they were last dating in 2015. This lines up with how Thor spoke about Jane in the Age of Ultron movie that released that same year. So I'm not even sure what country Jane's in. Her work on the Convergence has made her the world's foremost astronomer. At the end of that film, the Asgardian was fully focused on Infinity Stones and the dark vision of his home's destruction. Maybe Thor's desire to save everyone made it impossible for him to devote enough time to save his romantic relationship with Jane. Am I, uh, sensing feelings? Well, <laughs> you're right. Number 6. The movie might recreate an exciting fight between Gore and three Thors. Kristen Bale's villainous Gore the God Butcher made an extremely intimidating debut in the trailer. So this is my vow. Oh God, will die. Although he was only seen briefly, there was enough detail to hint that he'll be involved in an epic battle. 
Near the end of Gore's comic storyline, time travel shenanigans allow three gods of thunder from different eras to take on the Butcher. We know that the god of hammers and Jane will share the mantle of Thor. And Valkyrie is strong enough to fill in for the third Thor. I called you a Valkyrie. You know, I used to want to be a Valkyrie when I was younger. However, the film could also follow up on a Ragnarok Easter egg and bring in Beta Ray Bill. Since the character became worthy of Mjolnir, three fully-fledged Thors may fight Gore in live action in 2022. Your weapon is mighty, demon. But now it belongs to Beta Ray Bill! Number 5. Love and Thunder will alter a part of Jane's comic story. The preview showed that it won't take long for Thor to figure out that Jane is wielding his old hammer. Mjolnir. He reclaimed his title <laughs> as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? This plot point is a sharp departure from the source material. After Jane picks up Mjolnir in the comics, her identity remains a mystery for quite some time. It's interesting to see Thor learn how to trust a heroine when he's not sure about her backstory. However, it should be just as compelling to see how he works with Jane when they have such a complex relationship. Jane, I fought to protect you from the dangers of my world, but I was wrong. I was a fool. Will Thor be able to stay focused if he thinks someone he loves is in danger? Or will Jane be such a badass in battle that he doesn't worry at all? I just want to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. She's just my first bad guy. Number 4. Several Nods to Other Godlike Beings While we know we'll be spending quality time with Zeus, he is far from the only godlike being that will be mentioned in this epic odyssey. During the trailer, Jane lands in a hall full of statues of several deities. We can see figures that look like the powerful being known as the Living Tribunal, a character that has popped in the background of movies like Multiverse of Madness. There's also a monument that looks suspiciously like the fourth wall-breaking Watcher. As for me, I am the Watcher. The multiverse, every single world, every story is my home. And the skeletal statue could mean there's a death goddess floating in the cosmos somewhere. We're excited to see if other deities we've seen in shows like Moon Knight will also get shoutouts. This is Tawerit, goddess uh -huh. of women and children, and she's guiding us through our journey to the afterlife. Number 3. The Sinister Necro Sword's Frightening Special Ability The only ones who gods care about is themselves. Gore will have a huge advantage when he takes on the heroes with his dark weapon. The trailer seemingly confirms that he has access to the powerful All Black. This weapon can greatly enhance someone's body to godlike levels and extends their life. It can also shapeshift into forms like swords, fire energy blasts, spawn entire armies of battle-ready enemies, and much more. But the most terrifying ability that All Black possesses is that its user can get stronger every time they cut down a god. Their epic battle shook the heavens. But in the end, no one was victorious. Gore has traditionally been extremely good at putting deities down. As long as he's around, none of the gods within the entire Marvel Universe are safe. And so, to this day, the cosmos contains more dark, empty spaces than light. Number 2. Thor's legendary goats will arrive. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. In a few blink and you'll miss them shots, Thor relies on two mystical and furry animals to get around the universe. They are all but guaranteed to be the legendary goats that often bear the nicknames Tooth Gnasher and Tooth Grinder. When these animals first appeared in Norse mythology, it was revealed that Thor used them for both travel and dinner when he got hungry. Fortunately or unfortunately for the goats, he resurrected them with Mjolnir any time they became a meal. Men, er det ikke sådan for den stakkels skid? <laughs> Bare rolig, han er vant til det. We think the film will likely leave Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder off the dinner plate. But it is great that two mystical animals that were allegedly once considered too weird to show up in live action will now get their chance to ride into the spotlight. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number 1. Zeus probably won't make it If you've been hungry to see Russell Crowe enter the MCU as Zeus, you might want to say your goodbyes now. You are not like the other gods of kill. Have something worth fighting for. One of the first shots of the character saw him proudly wielding his legendary lightning bolt. Ironically, one of the trailer's last scenes sees Valkyrie using the weapon to fight Gore. We don't think Zeus would let go of his signature weapon just to be helpful. Give me the bolt, lightning thief. So we're willing to bet Valkyrie will borrow the bolt after Gore slays Zeus. Given that Taika Waititi killed off major characters in Ragnarok, we think he'd take out the Greek god of thunder in a heartbeat. Seeing Zeus make one last stand against Gore could make for one of the movie's most memorable scenes. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.